Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the panel discussion today by SRM University AP. Today's topic, the future of science is faster and exciting than you think, is something which everyone is looking forward to. Let me introduce you to the panelist for the day, Dr. J. Seelan Murgayan, head of the Department of Biotechnology. His major area of interest include proteomics, analysis of host pathogen interactions, quantitative proteomics analysis of infectious microorganisms, MALDI-TOF MS-based species identification. And he has got around about 42 publications. Next, we have Professor Ranjit Thapa, who is also the head of the Department of Physics. His area of interest include quantum mechanics, machine learning approach, catalyst theory, carbon and boron-based materials. He has got a whooping 84 publications to his name. Next on the list, we have Dr. Imran Pancha from the Department of Biology. His area of interest include microalgal biofuels in biorefinery, TOR signaling in microalgae, algal stress physiology, and he has got around about 32 publications. Next, we have Dr. Karthik Rajendran. He is from the Department of Environmental Science. He's, his area of interest include techno-economic analysis, sustainability metric indicators, waste management and bioenergy systems. And he has got about 32 publications to his credit. Last but not the least, we have Dr. Manjula. She is from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Her area of interest include network security and privacy, WSN and IoT, machine learning and cybersecurity. And she has three publications to her name. Now with such elite people on the panel, we certainly are looking for something really interesting for the day. The panel members will be talking about the topic which I've already mentioned. Now, I would like to hand it over to Jesse Lin, sir, the moderator for the day to carry on the panel discussion. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, madam. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, my dear colleagues and good evening, audience. It's a nice evening today. And we are going to talk about the future of science is faster and exciting than you think. So what we think now, that's very important point. We travel with the time. We cannot stop the time. Our aging is happening. We cannot stop our aging. It goes. After eight years, we have to die, miss die. That's all. But what the science is doing, the science is try trying to minimize the time. For example, if you want to do a process for 10 days, the science and time makes this to make it in one day. That means within a single day, it's a business. So it makes the things to happen in one single day. And then you will get the benefit. This is one side. And the second side, the science is also trying to bring down the cost. When you, when you are investing 100,000 euros and later it becomes just 100 euros, you'll be excited. So in two ways, we are getting benefited. There are other benefits also. The main benefits are this one. One is making the things faster. We cannot change the time. Everyone has got 24 hours. No one has got 25 hours. You cannot extend it. You cannot postpone it. We cannot stop it. Once you are born, your race starts. You have to run towards death, whether it's 80 years or 8 years or 100 years. You have to run. But within this time point, we are trying to do much more maximum things. Let me explain in two different aspects. Because of my esteemed panel members, are really experts in their own subject. They will explain you about their own field-based developments and the future aspects. Before that, I will explain you with two concepts. The first concept is the human genome sequencing. In 2003, in the year 2003, the human genome sequence was announced. Yes, this has been sequenced. The sequence is ready. That's what the announcement was made. At that time, there was a big dream. People were telling that, oh, it's very expensive. 100,000 US dollars has to be spent to sequence a human genome. It was very expensive. But the rate come down. Now you can perform the sequencing even for $1,000, less than that. And we will reach a time, in no time, we will reach for 10 US dollars. That means you spend 10 US dollars, you can get your sequence done. You will know. The whole sequence, the entire sequence you will know. See, 
the money has come down and the time has on those days several hundred thousand scientists and with lot of machineries they start working in the laboratory to sequence one human genome but now we have lot of machineries but the time is very very fast and the and the cost is also very very less the second thing the transistors so on those days in 1950s when the transistors were introduced they had only one transistor or two nowadays in a chip we have billions of transistors and we are trying to do lot of wonders and in the medicine also on those days if you get a cancer it is very difficult to treat nowadays we can do the treatment we have biomaterials we have synthetic biology you can synthesize a bone in the laboratory and put that probably you might have heard during the covid season singapore has introduced a lab based chicken meat that means they are not growing chicken anymore in the poultry they culture the chicken meat and they are marketing it so this is the future and again again it's exciting you are getting the things faster you are making the things cheaper and you are making the business very fast and in future also your brain for example if you are trying to put something in your brain you need to read you need to understand but in future this can be circuited you will connect it to the to your to your chip and you will get the idea very fast so this is what we are faster with this introduction i invite our colleagues to have a discussion on their respective subjects because this panel discussion is going to be unique in nature they will be talking about respective subject and what they are doing because these panel co colleagues they are all leading scientists they will talk about their respective you know, field and they will also talk about their respective importance so may i call upon now professor ranjit so, so, to to introduce himself and then to take forward of course the other panelists also can intervene and stop and add their points yeah thank you very much professor jaisilan and uh, it was a nice introduction before we start our discussion so as you all know that uh, particularly the world is uh, actually facing a uh, one of the very big problem currently is from a virus which is named as a covid 19 so there are a lot of effort has been done by various researchers it started from biologist and also chemist physicist and environmentalist computer scientist everyone is putting their effort to minimize or stop this virus uh, which is now a threat for mankind progress so overall if you see that 2019 around december the invention of this virus or discovery of this virus happened and it came uh, from wuhan city of uh, china but what is the important point you have to see that once it was known it was immediately identify the structures and everything we know the scientists know it and everyone in tv everyone knows this is have a crown and it have a how it is um, activating our ac2 and lot of things are every common men are start talking now covid 19 what is the structure even every child knows everyone knows but how this happened how the structure is known to the world if it happened just 20 years or 30 years back it was not possible to know the structure of this virus within one month in a one month we know about everything about virus so as you know that x ray diffractometer was invented long back to understand like lot of uh, like two element to make a uh, make a modern periodic tables it was invented and then it was used and lot of things came up so light was used as a wave and the property has been used to identify the element so similar technique was developed slowly slowly in the last 100 years and what happened nowadays the modern techniques such as automation and cryo electron microscope is used to understand or to define or to find the structure of this virus which has been done in a measure of maximum 2 weeks or 3 weeks of time so you can see that how the science has been progress and what was the role of a physics invention so you have to always either you have to diffract or you have to scatter light or electrons on some surface then only you will get structure without that it is impossible so this is one of the area which was always a vibrant area of physics 
Why I am telling this? Because the discovery of Raman effect by a well-known scientist of Raman, it's happened in the year 1928, 20th February, that was also a scattering problem, which is known as Raman scattering or Raman effect. There are two differences between this concept. Is the X-ray diffraction, in this case, light behaves like a wave. But in case of Raman effect, in case of this, the light behaves something different. What is that? That was particle. How light can be a particle? So before that also, a lot of other effects was, were there. So what was the special in Raman effect is that when it interacts with the matter, it gives you three type of wavelength or energy frequency like that you can say three type. One is your is same as the energy of the incident light. Second is energy less than the incident light and another one is higher than the incident light, of course, in a lot of fractions value. So at that time, it was a challenge to find out how an and photon is coming and interacting with a matter and you are getting a photon which is higher than the energy which is incident on this electron or matter. So that was a mega problem and it was solved uh, by Raman and it is it becomes a structural fingerprint and nowadays it have a huge application if you want to differentiate one, one, between one, uh, one minute uh, um, i want to just stop for a second um, among the uh, spectroscopies uh, like uh, uv visible we have a lot of spectroscopy there's only one spectroscopy in the world with the name of the scientist it's raman spectroscopy that's the greatness of the raman uh, observation yes ranjit proceed uh, this is what i want to tell yeah, so it becomes a fingerprint for the molecule and the structure. So nowadays, if you want to differentiate between two small molecules, even they look like identical, like your two fingers even look like identical, but you can easily find when you do their fingerprint. So this was the one of the greatest invention, and because of that, he got Nobel Prize in a two years in, in, a, in a two years. So this was uh, that's why I'm telling so so. So now, if you understand, is the all problem or all the things is solved or what are the things is we have to, if any physics students is coming up and what is their challenge? So you can see that physics starts from gluon and then quark and then electron, proton, and then start end in the universe. So gluon and electron you never can see and universe, which also you never can imagine how much big it is. So this is the range of physics. So where we are and what I am doing, also I will tell you in next uh, five minutes. So particularly, if you understand that there are, if I tell you, there are three things which nowadays world is looking for. Initially, we are looking always for food, cloth, and house. But nowadays, a world is looking for health, energy, and security. That could be a that is the main things which world, every country, which is developed country are looking for. So health already, you know what is the importance because of this COVID-19 and energy scarcity is high. How to solve this? And if you start producing energy from other source, environment will give effect. So the things is in case of energy, if you take it, there are two things which always a physicist have to address in future or now also is climate change. You can stop this climate change. How CO2 is one of the greenhouse gas. How you can stop the production of CO2. If it is produced, how you can convert into some other thing by your some special materials. You have to find that material. No one knows now. It is unknown problem. Another one is energy. Energy is a lot of sources known as a very huge amount of content energy. So scientists are start to find out a material which can convert your nitrogen, air nitrogen into ammonia, which is a source of energy, which can solve because whatever technology came, all our storage and other things is for 
very mild amount of energy if you want to do any industry scale production of your iron you want to heat and convert into steel you need lot of energy that can be given only by gasoline or this type of product so we need such product in a way of ammonia but if you produce ammonia you are producing more co2 so again challenge so these are the challenge which we are addressing through our quantum mechanical calculation we are solving schrodinger's equation where we are understanding each electrons how they are behaving when they are in a different atom and how you can really think that way and find the materials using quantum mechanical calculations and supercomputer using so this is my research area and apart from that we are also teaching in srm university like subject like quantum mechanics and basics here they know and also we are you know one of the main things which is a classical to quantum computer if i tell you who can make the initial breakthrough it will be physicist who can because start from physics of superposition principle your qubit is nothing but a concept of superposition principle a electron either in a zero state or a one state can a electron be in a state which is either zero or one it was one of the challenge in 1926 and later on it is solved that yes electron can be in a state which is in between zero and one which is known as the superposition state and that is the rise of quantum computer the concept of quantum computer and do you think that quantum computer will be more faster than classical computer i will say no it is not like that quantum computer is not going to be faster but quantum computer can solve which was never solved by classical computer for example if i give you a very easy example like a layman if you have a four card which i have seen from some youtube if you have a four card if you want to find out one card is queen you have to do minimum 2.4 or 2.5 time you have to see that which is the queen card if you use any classical computer but do you know if you use quantum computer you can tell in one time and that is the logic that is the basic between the difference between the classical and quantum computer and quantum computer are not just a speed it's a completely different concept it is uh, electron uh, ranjit ranjit can you tell us uh, uh, you are talking about classical computer and quantum computer what was uh, the yes, difference yes. in the in the difference in the time point when was the quantum computer came and when was the classical computer came and where do you see another 50 years or something like that see the classical computer is is was nowhere when it was invention of semiconductor in 1960 and n type p type intrinsic extrinsic semiconductor silicon chip came in 1960 that okay. was the start of the modern classical co computers okay so from vacuum tube it converted into a transistor which is made up of semiconductor okay so whole silicon valley is another things are based on this silicon chip hmm. so but what they are behaving they are behaving simple electrons and they have charge and i am a charge i am carrying a charge and i have i have a uh, so i am a simple going through a circuit which is a just a normal thing mm. but now if you concept a electron which have spin also and behave differently mm. that will be like a free electrons mm. and the spin never considered in the classical computer okay now this spin if i take either up or down is fine mm. but is it possible in between up and down mm. that is the question it was a question but it is solved it's solved already okay yeah that now it is possible to have in between that state but mm. another problem is we never can know what is that state if you go and measure that that system will collapse so mm. that is a very very fundamental challenge of physics mm. which of course physicist is solving and it will be solved mm. and there are some bottleneck 
And one more uh, last two minute, I will take. No, you can, you can take because uh, we want to discuss because we are, need to. I mean, I have some more questions also. Yeah, some two minute I will take. For yeah. example, oh. uh, if you send from your laptop uh, one key to another person, hmm. and if you are sending through classical channel or classical way, hmm. if I am a uh, I am a I am a person who can easily uh, easily take your key and I can see that file and again keep that file in your place. Now you never can know receiver never can know that I have seen that file, mm. but it is not possible in quantum computer. Okay. If anyone disturb the system will collapse. That is the fundamental. You never no one can uh, uh, take your information. Okay. And how it is, why it is, that is the challenge of quantum computer. Of course, this is the new things which is coming up and uh, uh, we are teaching that, but my research is not different. Uh, we have taught also in our university that subjects, very interesting, uh, particularly oh. for physics students and quantum computer and EC students. So with this short understanding of physics, what is going on, uh, as per my knowledge, a lot of other things are also going on. So I want to stop here. Thank you, Professor Jaisilan. Yeah. We can move. Yeah, thank you. That was wonderful uh, update. So we'll come back to you with a lot of questions at the end. Uh, so we'll also ask you. Uh, may I ask, uh, uh, I mean, Karthik Rajendran uh, to come out with uh, environmental science and other aspects. Uh, thank you, Professor, uh, regarding the brief introduction. So with respect to environmental science, you are looking at uh, one of the worst situation or the scene that we are looking at in the 21st century, right? Like with respect to the COVID-19. So uh, previous speakers have highlighted about uh, one of the virus which has created such a big uh, global chaos, right? But then just think about what happens if uh, hundreds and thousands of such virus exist and if it is all coming out and how the world will be a better place to live. So uh, this is what will happen if we fail to take a measure in terms of how the climate change is affecting us, right? So we are worried about COVID-19, which is uh, just an effect of uh, one particular virus. But then the same could happen with the thousands of virus, which is all sleeping under the glaciers in Antarctica, under the, so much of uh, Arctic ices. So when they are melting, then that can, when we have a human interaction, then yeah, uh, so, uh, uh, sorry for uh, stopping you for a second. I, I remember there was an article three years before. Um, they, they were able to re revive the worms which was trapped in the ice of uh, Arctic region. It was 33,000 years old. So yes. they were sleeping. They were sleeping all the years and they were able to bring them back to the life. Yeah. It was then, an amazing aspect. And the same thing also will happen to the virus. And we are living in a Deccan plateau where the decant decatrons are there and every layer has got a virus and if all this virus is, comes out so we are miss yeah you're right yeah. Yeah, please yeah. continue so yeah. uh, just add to that one today morning i was reading that there was a tree which was uh, considered a uh, 2000 year old it got extinct but then uh, somewhere uh, some old uh, tribe people they have stored it in some small uh, what do you call the uh, some small box, wooden box, and it oh. has been uh, just buried under the soil for quite a long time. Suddenly, due to some uh, excavation practice, they got this uh, thing, the wooden box, and then they tried to sow the seed. They thought that this particular tree was one of the native seed of that particular region, but it mm. got extinct. But they could recover it back after uh, 1,800 years. Okay. So the 200 years after, what I'm trying to say actually is, uh, these kind of things happen. Like we think uh, like it is all gone. Okay, maybe vaccine can stop spreading or these things can stop spreading. But you will always have a transformation. So from one form to another. And we need to look at, uh, we are all concerned about uh, different areas of sciences. Like, you know, there is a craze about computer science, which is all good. But at the end, what is the problem that we are trying to solve? Now we want to go to Mars. And we are exploring uh, intraplanetary uh, orbits and other things, which is all good. Like as Professor Ranjit mentioned about, you know, you can start from the 
uh, quantum level to the universe level which is ever expanding so mm-hmm. where do you start and where do you end is the question but uh, with respect to our living in this particular world we have only one world which we have identified so far there might be parallel universe that is existing there might be researchers who are finding a uh, similar earth like planets and they have named quite a lot but as far we know as on date that the moment that we speak now we have only one planet where we can live and if this particular planet becomes unlivable unhabitable what we will do there might be a lot of uh, research that is going on with respect to we can live forever we are uh, changing our uh, genes and mutations maybe biologists people can talk more about it so this is one of the point with respect to climate change uh, that i want to bring and uh, sea level rise so these are our two issues environmental issues that needs immediate attention and what you can do you know like irrespective of the area that you study irrespective of the field that you are in but how you can contribute to the environment let's say for example our government has banned plastic usage so we we should no longer use plastics in our uh, food or the paper plates or anything so why it is actually banned or what is the reason for it because when it has such a lower micron it also affects your health it affects this is particularly affecting the entire value chain of an ecosystem right it affects the marine life there are so many photographs that has went viral in facebook and twitter and other social media platform for example a eagle in his uh, uh, stomach there is a lot of uh, uh, plastics and if you take a fish or anything when they die or if they want to dissect it then you can see lot of plastics yeah and uh, here also you are right uh, for every three fish uh, we take from the sea it has got uh, microplastics yes that's another thing yeah yeah please hmm. so uh, now we are coming up with like see there are so much of uh, uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning based programs and systems that integrate how we collect the waste from the ocean so it is not just that uh, you have to choose a particular domain but how you are choosing the domain and how you are interconnecting to that domain to an, another area is quite important so this is where the uh, uh, the title of our topic comes in the future of science is faster and exciting than you think so when you have the excitement and the uh, uh, approach towards the science in terms of application which is what uh, all the previous speakers have been speaking about so then you get a, a completely different picture that you will enjoy science thank you sir uh, yeah that was a, that was a wonderful point about the climate changes and the oceanic uh, rise that's a really really good one and uh, we really need to bother when because there's only one earth where it is just uh, one more point i would like to add Uh, in the next 30 to 40 years if i just say the south indian coastal line of india hmm. if the average calculated uh, degree level of temperature by 1.5 degrees we will lose at least 3 uh, meters of our coastal region 3 meters in height that means most of the bigger cities including chennai bombay chennai. kolkata uh-huh. including chennai bombay kolkata kochi will hmm. be submerged in the next 40 years uh i you 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 are, you are uh, threatening us because already chennai whenever there is a rain you know uh, they are in the water because yeah. in chennai if you go there they, sometimes the plot owners tell uh, 10 feet water <laughs> plot but you, you you will think that you will dig 10 feet 10 yeah. feet to get water it is not 10 feet down it is 10 feet up high yes 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 so uh, <laughs> this know? is the point it's not about uh, threatening but it is about how important warning. it is it's a warning warning is yes. the right word Yeah. i'm just how joking i'm just joking yeah how important it is for us to uh, look at uh, the importance of environment that we are living in not just that look yeah. at the way with respect to the air pollution in delhi delhi is not far away from hyderabad and hyderabad is not far away from chennai or bombay if it can come to one city it can come to the next city so mm-hmm. we can have all the uh, economic development everything and uh, what we will be breathing whether can we survive so that is the question like our uh, uh, existence is uh, threatened yeah So yeah, that that, 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 no, that's also a wonderful point. Uh, for example, the Apple computer CEO, Steve Jobs, he succumbed to cancer. You know, money, yeah. the money power is there. Yes. He has the medicine power, but uh, unfortunately this happened. So yeah. this can happen to anyone. You are right. It can, can happen to any, anyone. And Karthik point, one of the point is very important is that 
you no need to be in one domain you can be a biologist you can learn computers you can be a computer science you can learn biology or you can be a mechanical engineering and learn biology what we call mechanic mechanobiology or biomaterials so for that you need to know more than one domain for the benefit of the human kind if you know only one domain then it is like a it's it's not it's a mechanical you just live with that but if you want to take forward you need to know more than one domain that's where our university is standing very special because an economic student can study biology here by choosing a minor or a physics student can study engineering subject by choosing a minor or subject or engineering student can study biology or an economics so this is what we called as school of liberal arts and science that's what we are trying to bring and we are also having courses which can take in different things so this is what the future so everyone in future they will have more than one domain knowledge this is a wonderful point karthik that's yeah. nice just to yeah. add uh, if you look at uh, any bigger companies you know for example if you take boeing or if you take amazon or if you take mm. apples mm. right so in all these companies you might be hired for your particular skill but always uh, you know like it is not that only one particular skill is hired or uh, you know there mm-hmm. is always a different departments and one department has to even if you take it there is a okay. developer there is a person who is actually testing and there is someone architect there are mm-hmm. different levels and uh, different structural systems are there mm-hmm. so what i mean actually is you might be uh, the point just adding to the point which you had mentioned Uh, there might be a way that you are working on a particular domain but you need to actually know how to apply your domain knowledge in other area mm-hmm. this is where uh, your expertise or like this is just like uh, learning how to learn correct right correct. so correct. learning how to learn because we are we we learn something always over our course of period of time like for example if a student is spending four years of knowledge gaining mm-hmm. a particular uh, domain area but mm-hmm. then after you learn then you should actually try to implement it if you think about like the mobile phone in front of us nobody would have uh, thought uh, i was just looking at uh, two days back a short video on how uh, mobile phones has evolutionized since the uh, 19 2000s last 20 years if you talk mm. from uh, nokia phones and then in 2007 8 when the iphone was first launched and yeah. now how the mobile phones have changed yeah. and if you look at the overall picture it is not just one field has been included in that mobile phone mm-hmm. but the question one question which is remains is is this phones still good for the environment or not <laughs> right so yeah. there are lot of questions unanswered i think uh, professor ranjit has already pointed out that scientists are still solving the problem one by one and mm-hmm. uh, we are playing a small minor part of uh, this particular uh, problem solving puzzle for a better world to live yeah See the mobile phones. Yeah, you are right. The mobile phones. We are. I mean, I still remember my first computer has what two two hundred and four to fifty four fifty four MB RAM speed, and my mobile at the moment it's six MB six GB RAM speed. It's completely development is really very very fast, and another ten fifteen years we'll have much more faster system. But what about the environment? I think we will evolve. we'll come out with a uh, natural technologies to, uh, we'll find out the fast forward technologies to get because everyone is trying to do something like a clean energy clean source clean air and um, something like a electrical vehicle and other things hope, hope we'll do the things and otherwise the youngsters we'll train the youngsters to do that they will get out of all this difficulties so they will come out and we'll have a better future that's what i believe any any more points karthik you want to add that's it for me okay If there wonderful. is anything uh, popping up i'll add it later yeah okay thank you thank you kartika now i call upon uh, dr imran panchar uh, to talk about his aspects thank you very much sir i am completely agree with you kartik and ranjit sir what they are saying that this i mean this century is like a, a century for the interdisciplinary research and if we consider as a like a biological point of view we all know that now we all are suffering from this pandemic this covid 19 since last almost one years but the good thing that is in this 2021 is that i think this development of a vaccine so if we consider that i mean 
the research, the interdisciplinary research, as Karthik and you and Ranjit sir mentioned that this is a time of interdisciplinary research. There is a no, we cannot say that this is this is a discipline or this is the specialization. Everything is interlinked. So if we start with like a vaccine, if you consider that the, the first time when vaccine is actually invented by maybe uh, Edward Jenner and maybe the Louis Pasteur for the rabies vaccine and all, or if we try to develop any new vaccine in a uh, normal uh, timeline, it will take almost like 10 years or more than 10 years because there are different phases for the development of vaccines, starting from the basic research in the lab that will maybe take two or four years. And then there is a different clinical trials, like clinical trial one, clinical trial two, clinical trial three, and then clinical trial four and so on. Like each and every stage, I mean, there is a different aspect, say, for example, safety, immunogenicity, and other regulatory aspects and all these things. So development of vaccines will generally take a 10 to 20 years time until it reaches actually to the market or a particular individual. But just think the COVID vaccine that is now available in the market. As we all know that there are like so many candidates that is available as a COVID vaccine, uh, uh, a very good Uh, within hello yeah your your voice was broken for some some seconds okay yeah now now can you hear me yes yeah so so, so you know that i mean since i mean within one year of sh short uh, time span i mean our our scientists have developed more than many i mean more than five or six very good uh, covid vaccine candidate this is uh, happened due to the uh, I mean, uh, Imran, uh, sorry, uh, there are more than 100 candidates in the row now. 100 candidates of vaccine. Yeah, more yeah, the, yeah. I, I agree, but what is actually now, I mean, people are using to, I mean, give vaccine in a different yeah. country, say, for example, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, our Covaxin, yeah. uh, yeah. that COVID shield, and all these things. So if you say that this is a result of actually the interdisciplinary uh, research between the computer science, biochemistry, physics, biology, molecular biology, all these things, because uh, in order to develop a vaccine, first they have to find some hits. So maybe computer science has helped them to identify, okay, maybe they can use this part or, and then they can develop a vaccine and then biochemists, physics, all will help in order to, uh, in order to, I mean, shorten this, uh, time span so that we are, I mean, uh, able to synthesize this vaccine. And now with the help of like computer science and machine learning approach, people are actually trying to understand that what type of other pandemic that may be, I mean, come in the next uh, coming year so that we will be ready for that. I mean, they are using this type of machine learning approach that, okay, what type of mutation may be possible as Karthik told that there are many viruses is there in like uh, Arctic, right? So, I mean, what type of viruses are there and what type of mutation probably uh, will create a problem for the human kind? So we will be ready for that type of future, uh, this type of pandemic. So we will not suffer, right? So this is one of the aspects that is going on. We can say it's like a faster than what we think that, I mean, development of vaccine within a uh, short duration of time, like within a one year, if you develop it, it's like, it's like a faster than what we think. The next very important thing we can say is that this year's uh, Nobel Prize, actually it's a Nobel Prize in chemistry, uh, not this year, we can say it's a 2020, so last year Nobel Prize, that is about the CRISPR-Cas9, one of the very fantastic or a remarkable technology that is, I mean, uh, discovered earlier in like uh, 2012 or 2011 by two uh, scientists, so that we can use this type of CRISPR-Cas, that type of genome editing, technology to develop or breed uh, plants that can give a high yield. They, the plants may be resistant to various types of stress, either the biotic and abiotic, and maybe the plants is like fortified with various vitamins and other uh, elements that is very important. And I mean, many part of the world, we have uh, this type of problem that they don't have sufficient nutrients. So if we use this type of genome editing tool, we are able to develop plants with uh, a multiple stress tolerance with a high yield. Or we can also explore this CRISPR-Cas9 type of technology in order to treat uh, various diseases, say for example, cancer and other neurodegenerative disease and uh, rare disease. So this is a technology or this is type of a revolution that is going on that we can say it's faster than what we actually think.
Say, for example, uh, Dr. Karthik and uh, Ranjit Thapas are told that one of the main issues is like there is a problem. We don't have energy, right? We don't have energy. And whatever we are using as a source of energy is creating a problem. As Karthik rightly mentioned that, I mean, ultimately, we have to think about our environment, right? Even if we are using any energy resource or any technology, we have to think about environment at, at a last point of time, if we cannot pollute our environment. So we have to find a greener approach for the energy, various type of maybe biomass, or maybe we can use, as you mentioned, that the synthetic biology approach. So synthetic chemistry is, I mean, uh, a very known word, but synthetic biology. So like, what is synthetic biology? There are certain things which is, I mean, living system is not able to synthesize naturally, but we actually express some gene from a different organism to the different organism and then we will actually uh, uh, synthesizing a particular product that is actually helpful for uh, humankind and that will also maybe reduce the environmental pollution so we have to consider this type of aspect and that is actually we can say we have to think beyond our limits so that we we can see our future faster than what actually someone will think we have to uh, have develop a um, new medicine or like now there is a due to this genomics and other technology now people are uh, talking about the personalized medicine they have a genome of a particular uh, person and then they they have a, like a personalized medicine they know that okay imran after maybe 50 years probably he is a diabetic or something like that so there is a personalized medicine okay you have to take this type of precaution before you turn to 50 and then you have to take this type of medicine so this is actually the technology that is coming and we can say that this is actually the uh, our future that is faster than what we think. So that's yeah. all about. Um, uh, Imran, that was a wonderful point, I would say. Uh, for example, when you when someone is having a cancer and if they walk to the hospital, they need to test it with uh, at least 300 types of drugs which can cure the cancer. But it's not possible to test all 200 or 300 types of drugs. But what we try to do nowadays is that we have a micro titer plate, we culture the cells, we put all 300 types of drug in that, in that uh, micro titer plate and you will get the result next day morning. Okay, this combination of drug works faster. And they, they, doctors directly go to that. So it's a kind of personalized thing. And though, as I told you in the, in the beginning, it's a, your, your, your point is really valid. Uh, the the genome-based sequence-based uh, medicine is go going to be very much faster. When you when you have a sip of water in a black club, when a glass tumbler or glass uh, container, and some of the cells from your from your lips sticks to the glass, and these uh, these uh, uh, cells can be retrieved, and your genome sequence can be done within thousand US dollars, yeah. and you can really. Find out, yeah, in another 10 years, you will get so-and-so disease or so-and-so complication if you don't do exercise or something like that. And you can also have a uh, have a treatment based on other things. But yeah. there are side effects also. If you know the genome sequence, the first thing is that the insurance company may not be happy to insure you. When they know that you will get a heart attack for 45 years, why should they invest their money? They will not in, in, come forward. So, And there will be socio uh, social distancing. For example, if a man or if a girl is having so and so difficulties and a cardiovascular disease or something like that, in 20 years, who will marry? They will try to reject. So these kind of things are there. So I think uh, we have to address the negative aspects of these things also. So the science has to, is already faster as, I, as we are mentioning and it's, it will go supersonic speed in next things. It's yeah. not, the, the other way is that it's uh, the magnitude of the speed of the science is getting faster. That's what. When, when we do the sequencing in, in the year 2000, 2000, it was slow. It was expensive. Now it's faster. For example, this uh, COVID, the virus sequence has been done several hundred times in, in the world wide, several thousand times. And all this data is available in the internet for free. Anyone can access it. When we got this uh, new variant in England, India was the first to isolate that and sequence it. We were very fast. Yes, so that's the thing. Imran, please carry on. Yeah, sir, well, one important thing is that if we use this personalized medicine, you know that there is now 
because of excessive use of this antibiotics and all we have a problem of this multi drug resistance bacteria right that is i mean probably i mean coming out in the environment and it is creating lot of problems so and, if we and, have yeah and you are you are rightly said because this is what we are going to foresee after post covid because we are using lot of disinfectant and this disinfectant will cause disinfectant resistant in commonly present microorganism on your skin so the microorganism which is exposed on the skin they will get a disinfectant resistance by chance they will also dis- i mean antimicrobial resistance or antibiotic resistance to be very specific when you go walk into a hospital for a common issue then the, the drug will not work a small wound will leads to prebiotic eras like situation during the world war 1 when the when the soldiers are, are wounded they will die because there's no treatment for them there's no nothing to kill the my, microorganism so this is what we, we we are expecting good this is a wonderful point uh, yeah yeah imran please proceed yeah thank you sir i think that is all what what i want to discuss wonderful uh, thank you thank you very much uh, imran now i call upon dr manjula uh, the he is an he is an assistant professor in the department of computer science and uh, engineering so she will be uh, talking so manjula stage is yours Yeah, thank you, Professor Jaisilan. So people might be worried, like uh, it's like science. So how come engineering is coming into the picture? But the main common point, what all the three faculties have been discussing, is the interdisciplinary. So I'll start right from that one point. Uh, just now, which Professor Jaisilan was talking about, your data is really available. So yeah. The, so now, uh, and next, uh, it's the title goes is how uh, it's a faster. earlier uh, inventing vaccines would take years together but now within one year of span time we have come up so for all this in the back end how computers or communications all these are helping us is a big question i'll just give you some examples and try to interlink them now for example uh, the prediction part either it can be a disease or uh, professor was telling about knowing the genomics it's apart from in the back end what you have improvements in your biotechnology related aspects or the physics aspects the other one is the computer aspects so sometimes it happens that we don't have enough of uh, material with us so in that case what we do is usually uh, we collect the data that is available online we try to process and make the predictions and then once you get additional information or so say it's like a realistic data we try to evaluate our predictions based on the data that is available with us so this process like it helps us it's not we need not wait for the entire data to be collected and then process and make the decisions so this is where our artificial intelligence or machine learning is uh, trying to look at one aspect the next uh, we were trying to look at people like if these are the uh, zones which are prone to covid and then accordingly alerts are being made and we get the latest information and updates just because of the communication and the networking technologies uh, that are running at a very faster pace so the uh, uh, professor jayshina was talking about initially a normal or a mobile phone uh, nokia way back in 2006 or 7 but now today we have the smartphone it is as good as a supercomputer kind of thing in your of course i cannot compare it but more or less it's a smart device in your mobile i mean in your laptop or maybe it's in your pocket and you get all the information uh, on your fingertips and this is due to continuous uh, improvement in the electronics part uh, maybe it's a hardware uh, part or in the networking aspects now recently i've been just uh, working on towards something called as nanotechnology and how nanotechnology will help us in computer networking domain or maybe in like uh, com- uh, ec people or anything else then i'm seeing like some wonders uh, using this nanotechnology devices so people work in physics domain or in something related to quantum domain and so on uh, then i have also seen meta materials which are called as a man made materials which are coming up then i was thinking how me as a computer engineer i can fit into this and make this use for the common society or the common public then when i was going through these articles i found that uh, these nano material devices maybe still these are under discrete part like one uh, set of group of researchers are working on developing antennas another set of researchers are working with the uh, uh, sort of processors which can operate at very high frequencies called as terahertz frequencies some are working with uh, other memory devices so one fine day when we try to have a computer and they you know the size of this would be in terms of nano nano in the sense usually this 10 to the power of minus 9 is a measure 
and these are almost as tinier as like your hair that much thickness would be the size of the devices now these devices would be injected into your body to uh, deliver the drug to an appropriate uh, you can call it as an antibody and some say for example if you have a cancer cell so yeah uh, manjula manjula those things are termed as targeted drug delivery drug delivery yeah targeted drug, drug delivery yes, sir, so we you. target only one organ yeah so yeah. maybe their technologies are different but right now i have seen how it is used now uh, here how does our role come into the picture is we try to study like what are the factors that affect when the drug is been delivered to the target uh like for example if we talk in terms of biological systems like there may be like uh, molecular absorptions or other effects that are going to hamper the flow of these nano devices so that is one part which is uh, treated within our systems then coming to uh, we have something called as network on chips now here networks on chips in the sense you can imagine a tiny uh, like for if you take a sim card in your mobile phone within that sim card itself we will be having thousands of devices which will be acting as a microcontroller or a microprocessor and then we need to develop or design protocols within that chip like uh, professor jason was telling one fine day we may have a chip in our brain usually this is also the same in goes with my father always he says who knows uh, i may be not uh, be at that time probably you may witness uh, we will have chip in our brain where everybody will become intelligent now If whether you want to become an intelligent on a secondary matter but at least we need to collaborate you and work so now when i'm giving such examples here it's not only uh, if i restrict to my domain okay i'm from ec like basically if you take a background is ec communication side now i move on to computer science but i keep interacting with the faculties who are into various domains because uh, uh, it's not restricted to one particular domain we need to collaboratively work and then you can see wonders that are happening uh, then i was talking about these meta materials in the sense like uh, ma- manjira have... manjira i want to go back to your uh, earlier aspect uh, yeah. nowadays uh, the recent terminology is that we are having e sim yeah e sim for yeah. those who are geo mobile they can convert their sim into e sim that means the mobile has literally no physical sim inside sim okay okay this is the new one this is the latest one Oh, that yeah. I haven't come across. Then I can. It's called as eSIM, and you can if you have a geo phone, you can convert them into eSIM. But maybe in future we'll have yeah, a, every technology in a, in a small, small uh, device. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. See, like one more as as we are discussing, uh, when I was taking this course on information theory and coding, uh, I was trying to uh, get the analogy of real life, how the definition of information has come. So the student was so excited, and one fine day he asked me, like, my, I questioned them, can we measure information? so they were how can we measure information so with the mathematics and all i proved it and showed okay they were convinced then one student raised his hand and said ma'am can we measure emotions yes we can and that's what the computer science people they try to collect the data from twitter or facebook or social medias and find out the relations and the emotional aspects that is involved uh, recently i was watching one television show uh, there uh, The, one of the participants says that nowadays we don't get people to share our problems so i keep explaining them to walls i share with them walls so now in future there's no uh, wonder uh, like where the walls can talk to you and listen to you and that's where these meta materials or uh, what we call it as a nano technology comes into the picture and that research is still going on they're trying to have the communication first communication aspect is been developed maybe then uh, we need to discuss about biology people or chemistry people like what kartik rajan sir was talking about the environmental effects so it's a collaborative work and one point day we may have walls which are talking to us so it's it's like things are going on and here uh, if we come to our uh, department in computer science we do work on machine learning aspects uh, right now i'm just uh, starting up slowly with the nano networking part i'm working on the a uh, physical layer aspect and networking like what if the information is eavesdrop uh, professor thapa was telling that if your key whether you have used it or not the physical key nobody knows but if it's a quantum key if somebody tries to eavesdrop that message it can be easily identified so now in the domain of nano networking people are thinking that there's no problem with the eavesdropping so now we are trying to explore in that aspect what if there is an eavesdropper 
then there is your information would be lost and that privacy leads to several uh, side effects also so we need to respect the privacy of the people environmental conditions as well as use science to create technology so ultimately i was thinking where do i fit into this team so it is like we are trying to use the science as a background and convert into the technology and give it to the people yeah so yeah. there is the, the line of demarcation between yeah. the subjects is gone, gone for yes. example in law in the earlier days there was engineering technology and sciences and of course they call us as stem but nowadays this line of demarcation is completely gone we okay. have bsc computer science we have btech computer science and we have be computer science so what is the difference you see everywhere you are studying the computers and if you have an this is the era where you need to have an additional knowledge in another domain to survive or to be successful yourself you need to know another subject very thoroughly you need to know and it's not so so difficult because if you yeah. keep your eyes open if you the keep professor, your ears open i would yeah. like to add one more point uh, yeah, like please. i was thinking uh, uh, like see for example if i want to start working with this nano device nano scale devices first of all i have no nano devices neither i have a nano computer nor a transmitter nor a receiver then how should i do my work but yes i have some mathematical knowledge i have some knowledge on networking i try to simulate these model using simulator that's a software it's a computer yeah. then in future the moment we get such products or in collaboration with other people we can try to test whether our models what we have developed is correct or wrong because uh, doing the test on actual uh, modules or actual setup would be a little bit costier at the initial stage till they are not available to us so that is one advantage of using your software this is my personal experience yeah you are right you are you are right the the stimulation and modulation uh, can be done with the software because nowadays we also used to hear a lot of things um the self balancing cycles and self uh, self driving cycles yeah we have we might have heard of uh the cars without driver google cars or we have we have the uh, virtual cars when we or something like they can drive yourself you can tell the truck where your destination and you can sleep in the back seat the car will take you but the legal complication is that if someone if the if this car hits someone whom you will charge whether the person sleeping in the back or the owner of the car or the car the car itself so this legal complication is that but this will be answered soon but nowadays the google self balancing cycle what is that self balancing cycle you can take a cycle again it's a amalgamation of all the subjects maths physics chemistry biology everything is put together you can sit on the driving seat on the cycle and it goes automatically and you can also have a laptop on your on your uh, handbar and you can read as if you are going in a bus because it can take you to the destination the self balancing uh, things bicycle. are what yeah, yeah. basically basic... i was just thinking uh, basically. what's the need of this bicycle then recently at uh, the during this covid i think okay. uh, if i'm not wrong in exact uh, uh, proper accuracy of the news like a girl from odisha i think 14 years girl or maybe 18 during that within that age uh, they were staying in delhi so yeah. because they had a survival problem she drove her father on the bicycle it's, it, it was a bigger it, it was a bigger to, bigger girl yeah bigger yeah. so i uh, just we were thinking if we had such kind of bicycle at least she could have uh, had a smooth way of uh, riding if they cannot afford the cars they can afford this at least bicycle i mean uh, yeah this is a wonderful point in 1970s since you touched orissa on the cycle in 1970s there was one man who fell in love with a queen of yeah. sweden yes and true. he drove a bicycle from the odisha and that to a second hand bicycle to sweden and he went there and with all these things and he just i'm here to marry the princess in 1970s and now he is the culture leader of sweden, sweden. he married to this he princess so there's a, another, uh, another story, story. <laughs> sorry for diversion but the technology has grown up so we driving. can also link that story here see uh, actually i think that queen was fascinated by his art one of the art forms yeah, okay course, not technology yeah, and technology. we here we also yeah. use arts in in directly or indirectly in our uh, uh, education yes. part or something where, where we are proceeding that's the thing because the bicycle means everyone we are thinking of riding now we have an e rocket you might have type it in the google and find out e rocket is a bicycle it's a bicycle 
which goes with pedaling and no fuel is required no petrol or no electric batteries involved and you can drive that with pedaling at 90 km per hour but the cost is very expensive now at the moment it is 11000 euros approximately uh, it will be like uh, 9 to 10 uh, 10 lakh rupees if you want to import in india this is a very new one this is a brand new one but what i am coming to tell is that over the course of time our inventions in the science and technology and engineering we are making fast forward we are accelerating the thing which has to be done in one week we are doing in two minutes that's what we are trying to do now which has to be done in one year we are running doing in a two days and which has to be done with a huge investment we are doing it in a very very minor investment where very like a very less investment very less effort and more benefits this is what we are uh, trying to get uh, in the things and your point is really valid one has to be i re- really re emphasize one has to be knowing much more subjects outside his domain then only he know, know how to apply this it's called as out of box thinking you should not be in the box always if you are if you 